it is Friday. I am just about to head back to work. And since today, well, let's see, two days ago, I ate both of my cooked food that I usually save for lunch. I feel like sometimes I just eat a lot. And sometimes when I have a whole bowl of food, I eat it for dinner. And then afterwards, I'm still craving more. So I end up eating my second bowl, which I would have had for lunch one of these days if I didn't eat it. But since I did, this is going to be my lunch. It is citrus one of pressed juicery. It has cucumber, pineapple, coconut water, lemon, and aloe vera in it. So I did say that I do really like the idea of drinking these juices, but they are really expensive. And the problem with that is I would just really enjoy drinking these as a snack because I get hungry throughout the day very easily or just drinking these for my in-between meal thing, like every two hours would be nice, even once a day, but each of these is $5. So that would be me spending $25 a week if I were to drink one of these a day at work. So that's just crazy expensive. This will be lunch. And then after two hours, I drink this. I'll probably also bring an RX bar. So when I first tried these, I didn't really like them. But now that I've had more of this one specifically, I've been ordering peanut butter solely. But my order for tonight, I'm going to get different flavors to try them out again. I'll bring this because I just know the second half of my workday, I tend to get kind of hungry. So these two might not be enough. I might be hungry for even more. Weekend is here already so soon. And tomorrow is a very special day. Super, super special. Okay, I am now driving back from work but I wanted to take this time to talk about an encounter I had this morning. I feel like self-awareness really is the best word for it because people do things and they never think about their actions afterwards or even think about how others might view their interaction, whether it's positive or negative. So basically this morning, I was doing what I normally do. I was walking Riley. And I've explained before in previous videos how I am when I'm in the world with Riley. So I was doing my usual ignore everybody around me, including anyone I pass by. I just tend to act as if they're not there. So even though they're passing by me and they're on the other side of the street, I just don't even glance in their direction. So basically it appears as if I'm not acknowledging their existence and this one woman had two small dogs and one of them was actually being reactive. It was barking at me. I'm generally okay, neutral I'd say, with people that I come by even if I don't greet them because the main reason I do that is just because I'm not interested in conversation and I feel like if you even say hi to someone, it might welcome them to converse with you and I don't want to waste my time like that. Anyways, the woman's dog started barking at me and once that happens, I tend to get on my guard right away and I automatically just don't have the greatest impression of this person already. I know we're talking about assumptions and that is making an assumption in itself, but I feel like it's a little bit different where even if I'm assuming something negative about something, my thoughts or opinions on that person doesn't get transferred to them because I don't say anything to them. And even if I'm ignoring them because of that belief, it really shouldn't influence or bother them if this person isn't some sensitive person individual. Sorry, I'm being very choppy with my storytelling. I don't think I'm very good at storytelling, but right as we were passing by, she said, good morning. And I said, oh, good morning in a freaking friendly manner. And right after I said that, after I returned a response, she says, you're not friendly, are you? I was really surprised by that response because nobody has ever directly said something stupid like that to me before. I've been acting this way for years and honestly this random and stupid strange belief in our culture that just because you are in public means that you need to be sociable is beyond me. I don't really understand why people believe stuff like that. 
So her saying that was definitely really annoying to hear and I didn't really say anything back after because it just startled me and I think if I did say something back it would have been rude and I would have wanted to ruin her day because that's kind of the person I am. If someone goes out of their way to make their assuming opinions known to you, then I don't really care about their feelings at all. I would be content with hurting their feelings. I would be happy if they were sad. So that's what I would have done if I returned a response. But unfortunately, I just don't know if I have it in me to go off on a rant on someone like that, even though I definitely feel the desire to whenever I come across people like this. I feel like this scenario just kind of reminded me again just how much people assume things about other people. That has just become a trait that I don't like in someone at all, including a friend. That is a, that is a trait that I have added onto my blackmail list where if I notice this trait in somebody then my respect for them sort of drops off. I feel like this concept of assuming wasn't something I fully grasped until the past few years because whenever I come across situations like this where I can directly relate it to, oh, someone is behaving or saying something because they are assuming something about you and then projecting that onto you, it just tends to always be a negative situation for me. So another example that I can easily give that was in conversation with someone was that my ex, the one that asked about my cat and got insulted by my questioning, he texted me two weeks ago or maybe just last week. Honestly, he texted me out of the blue and asked if I tried out Artifact and whether it asked and asked whether I liked the game or not. And from there, we started texting a little bit more and catching up, but I recently decided that I still have no interest in talking to him because he is exactly that type of person. And the way he talks reminds me of how he was still five years ago or however, or however long we dated. And I really did not like who he was back then. And if he is reminding me of it, then there's no good that can come of me continuing to talk to him. So I recently just stopped responding to him and we haven't really talked. But one thing or two things that stuck out when I was talking to him was that we were randomly talking about Artifact and mentioning the subreddit. And the subreddit is something that for the past month or two, I guess, even leading up to the launch of the game, I just stopped browsing that subreddit because people constantly just post negative shit on there or they're complaining and stuff and I just hate that mentality because to me it's just players bitching about things when it doesn't go their way and a lot of their complaints are just wanting the game to be easier you know stuff that I, f I despise because people just don't fucking try in anything in life so I mentioned something to him about how, to me, I don't really like gamers in general. I know that's generalizing really hard. I, I just know it's not the type of person that I would want to associate with in person. Because if you think about it, the stereotypes are pretty true where most gamers just don't have a job or they play all day and they don't do anything with their life and they talk in memes and all of that shit I just don't like at all. I would not want to associate with someone like that in person. So I just kind of mentioned to him that general idea that I don't like gamers and they're not really the best kind of people you would want to be around. And what he responded to me saying that is that he thought that I must be the most unhappy person in the world for having a mentality like that and when he said that I was like what the fuck kind of assumption is that me simply stating that I think that gamers are a bad influence and they're not good people to be around that apparently means I am an unhappy person in general in my life and I can't believe you would take one opinion 
one thought and apply it to their entire livelihood. He said that, I don't wanna be around people like that who say stupid things like that. And he is pretty much the same person that he was all those years ago in terms of where he is in life. That situation this morning was just freaking annoying. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that my year started off poorly. Going back to work has actually been a pretty easy transition. So that's always a good thing. And I just got to work, so I should probably go inside. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh. 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 So I am trying out some frozen meals that I could buy that would be a healthy alternative when I'm too lazy to cook. And this looked really promising, Amy's, because it's organic and everything. And I tend to really like Italian dishes like this that I can never make myself. But the thing is, I kind of ate it all before I could show you guys. I did take a picture for Shane, but the bowl that I get for this is so small. And I understand that pasta tends to be filling for smaller quantities. Okay, I won't make you guys stare at the box the whole time, but this just had, let me think how to explain it. So these little squares that had spinach on the inside, I think I ate six pieces of those in this bowl. And honestly, I think I'm still getting used to the fact that when I see a frozen meal and when I go to heat it up, Seeing it frozen at first was really not appetizing because it was in a regular paper bowl, a white one, those regular sized ones, and just had plastic wrap over it. And that's the way it came. So at first I was like, what the fuck is this? It looks so bad. But I heated it up as it explained to me and it actually tasted good. I liked it, but it's just not enough food for this. And I think it was like three to four dollars, so it's not even two dollars where I could buy two of these to make it one meal. It's uh, kind of disappointing because I liked it. It's just not enough for me. And I have realized that there have been times where I make myself even a whole bowl of my cabbage, squash, and salmon, and I'm still hungry after I eat it. I am just, I just eat a lot, maybe. I'm still hungry half the time. I bought another one of hers for lasagna. So I got this one as well, garden vegetable lasagna. And the package in itself seems small, although I can feel that it's kind of solid the whole way through this box. So maybe the serving size for this one will be better. I'm actually wondering if I should just heat this one up as well to eat for dinner because originally I wanted this to be my dinner but I'm still hungry, so I have to eat something else. I have been craving steak, so I could deliver steak, but if I deliver steak, that's spending like $30. When I can try this out, I'll try this out. Okay, this is kind of ridiculous. Maybe my expectations for these meals are too high? I don't know, but this seems really small for one meal. What the heck? Why is this a serving size? I'm so disappointed. So this is what the lasagna has become. Uh, I tried it a little bit, but it was still too hot, but I think it's okay. The taste is fine. It's just, I still can't imagine this being a serving size. So even though I would love to support you, Amy, these serving sizes are just way too small for me. So unfortunately I have not figured out the secret to skincare yet.
which is sad, right? I've been using products for a year and I'm not sure. There might be something I'm missing. I don't like it. It's not, my skin isn't clear like I want it to be. But anyways, the reason that I'm talking about this is because I ran out of cleanser recently and I needed to buy more. So something I haven't been doing, which people tend to recommend is double cleansing where you use an oil cleanser and then you use a regular one after. So I decided to buy a two-step cleanser and I also decided to buy a face mask, the kind that you apply to your face, not the kind that you put on and then peel off, the ones that I've been using, which I don't like because they just tend to be invasive compared to when you apply on and then it'll just stick to your face, not gonna droop or anything or be too big for your face, which they were for me. So this is the clay that I got. Deep Clean Pour Glacial Clay. I will put it on soon. I just did a workout and before you put it on, you have to have clean skin. This is apparently an oil cleanser, so this is the first step that I will be using. I think it's a Korean brand. And then this one, I have used this brand before. I got their green tea cleanser, which I would have bought again, but they were out of stock. So this one is blueberry. And I do recall liking this brand. So we'll see how it works out for me this time. Just gotta open it. Oh, that came off really easily. All right, I'm gonna wet my face really quick. I should use this spatula thing. Oh, that might be too much. I'll see. Or maybe not enough. I still have more on my spatula to use up. Oh, no. I feel like my face is all covered in this now. I kind of like this though. Too much. All right, wash this off. Now I just use my regular blueberry foaming cleanser. Oh, right, relax. This smells so good. Oh, I'm not supposed to rub. Oh, the heck? I have to put a lot, I guess. All right, I think this is enough. <laughs> My baby is three. I am going to pretend that we are sleeping at a time that is before her birthday. And then when we wake up, when the sun is shining through the blinds, she will be three, even though she is three right now. I apologize for my voice and sounding nasally because I watched Beautiful Boy Tonight with Timothy Chalamet and Steve Carell, Amy Ryan, and it was incredible. Definitely my first five-star movie of 2019 already, and I'm really glad, but I'm very excited for tomorrow because I'm going to dedicate it entirely to her. We are going to be out tomorrow. I don't really think I'm gonna hike though because I don't really think I want to do it with my knee, but I was thinking of taking her to Del Mar. It's been a while since we've been there. So we can take a nice long walk and then I'll drive all the way over to Verona to get her in a fetch session. And then we'll see where it goes from there. But I really, really enjoy dedicating the day to her. I was really hoping to do something a little more special, like taking another road trip, but unfortunately, it's just not a good time right now. Everywhere else is cold, and I uh, didn't think it would be a good idea to take a road trip this soon after last week. So we are gonna have to do local stuff together. Good night, my baby. I love you, puppers. Wow. Someone is patrolling my door. What do you want, Milo? Milo? <sighs> Good morning. I must look terrible right now, but you know what? I don't even care. So yeah, normally I uh, don't want to record when I'm not very clothed. Over the years, I feel like I've just gotten a better understanding or comfort with 
my body where at least when I was growing up I've always been super self-conscious or felt weird I guess being naked or being less clothed but over the years I've started sexualizing it much less to the point of now I don't even view it that way I tend to view it as comfort <laughs> it's weird I feel like I talk about comfort all the time now because it really is one of the high priorities for me so I think it started with just wanting to get less hair on a shirt I would be wearing so I stopped wearing a shirt to sleep or more like I didn't want to get the hair on my shirt in bed and have it pile up over a period of time so I just started sleeping without a shirt on and now that's like the only way I sleep and it's so comfortable <laughs> I definitely love it but then it makes for awkward filming moments like this I originally had all these grand ideas in my head about what I would be doing today for Riley's birthday but unfortunately it's going to rain today this kind of sucks but maybe I can try not to view it that way we can still have a nice birthday with her at home I know it's something she's super familiar with but I do think it's important to be able to still appreciate and enjoy something you are familiar with, something you do often. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> Birthday girl. I think I will, <clears throat> goddamn my voice, again, I will try to take her to go fetch before it rains. Give space. Break. Good girl. <laughs> Stretch. Ooh. Hello. Hey. Puppers. <laughs> sometimes I blow at her all of a sudden. But this time I just want to kiss your nose puppers. Hey. Good. See? Just a kiss. Peck. Before she looks. See? She's too slow. Oh shit, she got me. <laughs> Alright, I am back from taking Riley out to play some fetch and by the time I was driving back there was a little bit of rain starting to happen so I think I think I gotta stay in the rest of the day but she is on place now resting she's very tired hopefully she naps for a bit but something I actually just discovered while I was on my way back about a month ago I was looking up different Native American events and seeing where they're located to see if maybe I could possibly attend any because they fascinate me, right? I love their culture, I love movies on them, and I just think it would be very cool if I could attend some. So I found this event called the Gathering of Nations Pow Wow, and it is in New Mexico. And the main reason I thought of this again today was because 
When I looked up where they filmed Woman Walks Ahead, they filmed it in New Mexico, and I thought the scenery and cinematography for that movie was beautiful. I loved it. So when I realized they filmed there, I was thinking that I should take a road trip there as well. And I could definitely do it maybe in the spring. And when I was looking at Airbnb prices there, it was really cheap. So it seemed like a very great destination. I feel like nobody goes there also. So that's even better for me because that's, that's what I like. I like to go where other people don't want to go. This powwow is April 25th to 27th. And that's actually kind of perfect because that's springtime and it should be warm around that time. 11 hours and 30 minutes. Hmm, you know, honestly, a drive like that, I have considered not staying overnight somewhere and I would just nap whenever I could find somewhere that has a place that I could nap because I was talking to my friend about it in Goleta and it's kind of true when you're doing a road trip, you don't feel like stopping. That's kind of at least how I felt. I just don't feel like stopping. So I feel like if I drove and did this, I would just drive the whole time. Maybe ideally, if I were to do that, I wouldn't drive at night. That would definitely be a recipe for disaster for me because I would get tired or the darkness would definitely affect me compared to just driving during the day. I feel like that would be beautiful too. So I could maybe get up early 5, 6 a.m. and I'll start driving. And the perfect thing is that I'm driving east so I shouldn't experience any traffic along the way. So I am pretty excited about this. Just something I can plan for and hopefully, hopefully there isn't a Dota tournament going on around the same time because that would suck. I would hate to miss that. And I don't know if I would want to miss that. Wow, so today it must be the good luck of Riley's birthday because I went my first 5-0 draft and artifact. So even though there's no commentary, I am just going to upload the run in case people are curious. Uh, commentary is just way too hard. It takes too long. It's an hour and a half for the entire run, which is actually very short for five games in my opinion because some of these games can manage to run long. Got 5-0 and I feel like that satisfies me enough to not want to play any more Artifact today. I should play some Smash today because I haven't in a while. But I just received vitamins. So, sorry, there's a smash stream going on there's so many tournaments for smash there's one in denmark today called bahala and then there's another one going on right now with zero from smash 4. i don't know why it took me so long to start taking vitamins but i ordered these and it's opti women high potency 40 plus ingredients and there's like a huge ass list of benefits here which always feels good right so i'm supposed to take wow they're so loud i'm supposed to take two of these per day i'm gonna take some now and uh, probably watch some Smash, then watch another movie. I do kind of want to write up a review for Beautiful Boy because that was just a very powerful movie and I really liked it. So I haven't done a movie review on my blog in a very long time, but I do think I want to try to be more active on it now and write more because writing can be very therapeutic. It can be a very great way for me to get my thoughts down, not always on camera because typing, I get time to think and stuff. I still feel like I'm very bad at talking on the camera because I am trying to work on things. I want to say like less. I want to try to say um less. So anytime I need to think, I don't want to say um, I just want to be quiet. <laughs> so less ums and I actually want to say you know less. I tend to prefix things with you know and then a statement. but. I don't have to say something like that. I can just say my statement. So something I want to work on is to clear up, clean up my language, my speech, whatever you want to call it. I'll do a workout, but something I didn't mention yet is that I got a recall notice for my bike, which might not be that big a deal. I will just have to bring it to where I bought it, which is conveniently like 10 minutes away, so it's not a big deal. But basically it says that it's possible for coolant to leak from a radiator hose due to improper curing vulcanization of the hose material. If this occurs, the coolant could get on the rear tire, causing slipping, which could result in loss of control and a crash with injury or death. So that is the main one. And then there is another one that they are concerned about, which is a gear shift torsion spring defect. So basically, 
They just recommend that I bring my bike to the dealership I bought it from. I'll be getting these fixes done for free. I have to do this soon. I didn't plan on doing it today because it's supposed to rain and I think it did, but it died down. I don't really like riding in this weather anyways, so tomorrow I'm not really sure if I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it on the weekday, but I will have to leave my bike there for several days while they order the parts and get it done. So I will have to Uber back and forth. I fucking hate using Uber. But a convenient thing I guess is when I drop it off, I will also ask them for an oil change. I'm definitely due for one I think. So I'll have to get this done. Making some chicken. I am trying out the Italian dressing with olive oil method. I had them marinating since yesterday. And actually, after introducing Rylai to more diversity in meat, she has actually been adjusting to it very well. I figured there would maybe be other effects that could happen to her while she ate it and digesting and everything, but I think at most, for maybe some of the meats that she hasn't been eating very often. Maybe she's taking longer to digest. I think there would be some days where she wouldn't poop at all. Or actually something that is kind of entertaining is that for the longest time she stopped pooping mid-walk. That was something she did a lot last year and then all of a sudden she stopped doing it completely. It's not a good or a bad thing. It was just a habit that I noticed, and if she stops the poop in the middle of heel, that's totally fine. But she just never did it anymore. But recently, the past few months, also with introducing the new food, she started doing it again. So I actually kind of assume that when her body kind of normalizes, she might stop pooping mid-walk again. 